My name is Kasha Jacqueline. I come from Uganda, born and raised in the city Kampala. Just to give you a little background about my work, for the last 11 years I've been um, trying to fight or fighting the laws against homosexuality in Uganda. The current penal code, it's life imprisonment for homosexual acts. So for the last 11 years I've been trying to do that, but it's not only in Uganda that I do my work, because if you realize most of the parts in Africa which are red, homosexuality is criminalized. So my work also goes beyond just um, Uganda and East Africa, but also around the continent. So in my, in my country, we have the religious influence that has really, really caused a lot of um, chaos and commotion in the country. We've, uh, we've had also some guests from America, unfortunately, who have also come to, to my country and brought their black book, which we, we call it black book, but for them they call it the blueprint. And actually one of them is based in Colorado. So when I got the invitation to come here, I was really so glad that I'm getting to speak to people from Colorado. We have these religious fundamentalists who have come to Uganda and brainwashed our parliamentarians. They've brainwashed our mm, parents and also students in universities and telling them that homosexuals have come here to destroy families. Homosexuals don't believe in the traditional family of mother, father, two children, and a dog. That's why they work uh, in... Um, yes, they believe that uh, we, we've come to destroy that family of two children and a dog. So this angered very many people in the country, parents who are so furious that uh, we are here to recruit their children into homosexuality, and so decided to petition the government to make sure that the laws, that the current laws that are toughened. I did attend actually that seminar for three days and they kept telling me that, Kasha, we love you. We, do, we hate what you do, but uh, if you've come here to take us, we've come to take you back. So it was so weird to sit there and listen to all the, all the brainwashing that they were telling the, the people in the country. And after they say, Kasha, we love you. So, it was hard, but um, I wanted to sit in that, in that seminar for all the three days to hear for myself first-hand information. What are these anti-gay groups preaching around the world? So after, after they came to, to Uganda, they told our members of parliament, because they had um, meetings in the parliament, they addressed uh, uh, students in different universities, they told them that they need to change the law because we are taking advantage of the law. The current law only talks about homosexual acts. So they helped them, they gave them a lot of funding to propose a new law in the country. The original law was proposing death penalty instead of a life imprisonment. And actually even the members of parliament were having conflicts amongst themselves because some felt that the, the death penalty by hanging was still very weak. And so most of them were proposing death penalty uh, with firing squad, but fortunately, with support and a lot of lobbying, the death penalty was dropped. So the law recently passed two weeks ago. That is the president who signed it in front of a lot of international media. I think he was trying to prove a point that he can do whatever he wants in his country, but we all know that he only did that because of his political gains. So he used us as scapegoat from all the issues that are happening in the country to distract the country, and that was him signing the law um, two weeks ago. To give you a little brief about this law, is that even me standing here today is now illegal. So anytime they can arrest me upon arrival at the airport. Because the new law is just no longer about um, homosexual acts. It includes failure to report um, suspected homosexuals. For me to come here and speak to you is promotion of homosexuality, even if I'm out of the country. My landlord has to actually report me or evict me. Uh, these two weeks we've so far received two, I mean three eviction letters for our members, so we've had to relocate them. And this new law actually even talks about promotion of homosexuality, just having any material or even listening to any, any radio station or watching a TV program that talks pro-gay. 
that is promotion of homosexuality among so many laws in this new law. So that is what now we are battling with. And I want to tell you, because of that new law, a lot of media witch hunt has continued to take place. It's not like it's the first time. We've had this happening over the years. But after this paper came, after the law was signed, every day we've seen newspapers coming out, exposing people, our addresses, our pictures, what we do. And so many people actually have gone back into hiding as I speak. Many people have lost their jobs and others actually fled to neighboring countries, which are also not very good. We have 30 people registered in the camps in Nairobi. And, and it's very weird for Ugandans to be in the refugee camps because we are the only country in the, in the region that are not having a conflict. So all the people who are going to the, to the camps and are from Uganda, they are easily targeted because they know the reason why they are running away from Uganda is because of the anti-law. So even in the camps where they've gone for refuge, they're not, they're not safe. And uh, this has continued even yesterday as I left, it was still going on. But now we ask ourselves, this law has happened in Uganda, it was, it was signed in Nigeria, what is going to happen in other African countries? Members of parliament in Kenya have come out and said they're going to do the same thing that happened in Uganda. And just the last, um, the last article I read before I came on stage, I was reading about, about Kenyan members of parliament have begun bribing the youths to support their anti-gay propaganda. So the reason why we do this work even outside Uganda is because it only not affects people in Uganda, it also affects other African countries. And that is our worry to see that other countries are going to do this and soon we shall even see countries like South Africa actually repealing because there is a debate in South Africa where uh, some, some members of society want to repeal the laws. So it's really terrible that this is not only going to stop in Uganda. This is about the protests that happen in the country. These protests are there calling on the president before he signed the bill. Now here they were telling him, please sign the law. It's over four years. We are fed up of homosexuals. What are you waiting for? Don't listen to the Western world. And after signing the law, actually there were very many parties around the country led by religious leaders and members of parliament. People actually celebrating uh, the passing of the anti-gay bill into law. This is what happens with all these laws. We see lots of hate crime happening. And now people have a justification because now there is a law. So people feel that they can just hurt or, or do anything to a homosexual because the state is protecting them. So that is the state-sponsored homophobia that even now our own neighbors are, who have been waiting for the law to, to, turn, uh, to be signed are actually now looking for us. And we've seen sections of the community like the Muslims have come up with, with small associations where now they're moving around the whole country trying to look for homosexuals or even suspected homosexuals because there's a stereotype of how homosexuals look like. If you see someone with dreadlocks, that's a lesbian. If you see a man with earrings, that's a homosexual. So even people who are not gay but are perceived to be gay are also being targeted because of this law. And this is what happens. This is curative rape. This is, this is done actually by our nearest members of family. For example, your father can decide with his friends to rape you, to cure you, because he's, a, he's afraid that he's, you're going to shame the society. And the reason why these rapes are never reported to police because the survivors, first of all, are worried to be exposed, and secondly, they fear to be uh, excommunicated from, from their families. So most, in most cases, we never report these cases, we just have to deal with them within our own organizations. But also, what keeps us going is actually for us like this, where we come and share and get to know that actually people outside the world care about us, people love us, and people are standing in solidarity with us. And that for us keeps us going. Every day you wake up knowing the work I'm doing, even if it's not appreciated at home, at least I know people outside the world are supporting us. So these are some of the protests, people giving us support and solidarity. Even before the bill was passed into law, people writing and saying, Kasha, we are, we are with you, don't give up. People saying, Uganda, we are with you. That keeps us going. And then this is us. Even as we are still struggling, people fear to show their faces. As you can see, this is someone hiding their faces, but we do this sometimes not because that person really wants to hide their face, but to send a message 
that the person you're condemning behind that, that cover could be your father, it could be your teacher, it could be your doctor. So don't just condemn people, don't judge people without knowing them. Because some people actually just hate homosexuals because their teachers have told them to do so. Because they, they've been told the Bible has said so. So we tell them the person behind that could be your, your, your own person, your, your best friend that you're condemning. So here we're addressing the, the masses every time something happens, we always go out and say, look, we are here, we're not going anywhere, let's dialogue, which is of course difficult. With that, I, didn't ha I, could, I, I couldn't carry business cards for all of you, so I decided to put that there and just tell you that as I speak this morning, we went to court to challenge, to challenge the, the law that has signed. Uh, I wasn't there, of course, in person because I was here, but I want to let you know that not all hope is lost. Let's see what the judiciary does. So I'm really looking forward to engage with you after this. Thank you.